Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Jacob Zuma delivered his State of the Nation address last night. Terence Screamer joins me to unpack the major themes for the economy and business. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. One of the highlights of last night's address was the President's announcement that ESCOM will sign the outstanding power purchase agreements with renewables IPPs. Yes, this has been a, a long-standing impasse, as you suggest. It's, uh, it's been over 20 months where um, there's been a selection process under the Renewable Energy Procurement Program. Um, uh, bidders put in bids uh, in 2015, uh, and that round was then eventually expanded uh, into sort of three. So there was an initial October 2015, some projects were announced, wind and solar mostly. Then again in, in November, there, was, there were additional projects that were announced uh, under this third bid, uh, fourth bid window. And the idea was really to wrap everything up um, uh, so that when we move into the next phase of the renewable program, there would be new rules. So this was the sort of allowed people that had bid and failed previously to rebid their projects and uh, to come in with better prices. And we saw that the prices uh, reportedly fell to an average of 62 cents in that 2015 rand terms and at the, the bid quotes, bid quotation levels that Eskom had given at the time, which have since, since expired. Eskom then in the middle of last year said there's no way they feel they can sign further power purchase agreements until they got guidance from their shell, the ministry, as well as the Department of Energy, as well as the Treasury because they felt that assigning these at a time when they say now we've entered a period of, of sustained surplus, so they're looking at a surplus that's going to last until 2021, um, and saying that we don't need this additional capacity, it's going to be more expensive for the consumer, and they therefore felt that they needed direction before they signed anything else. This obviously was uh, um, against, uh, in, in the RPP's uh, view, against policy, stated policy. The stated policy is that we're going to diversify our electricity mix, that we were going to have um, uh, these re this renewable program rolling for a, a period of time. And that also around that policy, um, there was an industrial policy imperative to localize content. Uh, and we saw that some factories were developed. There was an effort on, on wind towers and other components in the solar industry, inverters for instance, now, all those factories have faced major distress in the last year because the earlier rounds of the RERPP have, uh, have depleted in orders. So if you're a wind tower manufacturer, as we saw with DCD doorbell, uh, DCD wind towers down in uh, Kucha, they basically shut operations in December because there was just nothing else. I've heard other, that, uh, other news that other um, news flow that suggests that other factories are also affected and are standing idle, for instance, people that make inverters for the soda farms and had invested to do the local content around that. So there's, there was definitely fallout, not just for the RPPs, but for the supply chain, the uh, EPC contractors, everyone was you know, expecting a certain amount of work which just didn't flow. And I think President Zuma's sort of announcement that these will be signed is, is uh, uh, seen as a major breakthrough. The key question now is whether Eskom will abide because they defied policy before, but I don't think they're going to be willing to defy the president uh, uh, on this issue. So I think we should see progress in the coming weeks and months on the signing of what is, you know, there are 26 large projects that are outstanding from those uh, um, bid windows. And then the third element that I alluded to is there's also these small RPP projects that have also been standing in limbo. Um, below five megawatts and I think so in total is about 37, 38 um, maybe if you include the CSP projects that haven't been signed from round bid window 3.5. So it's uh, you know so there's it's a lot of uh, projects there's a lot of obviously suppliers into that there's contractors into that that have been waiting for some time to get certainty and I think uh, finally there seems to be some certainty and some resolution out of the state of the nation. Did the President help in giving greater definition to what is meant by radical economic transformation? Yes, I think that was, <coughs> you know, renewables was obviously a, an announcement, a firm announcement, but I think what a lot of attention was going to be given to the speech was could uh, the President add flesh to the bones of economic transformation? And he attempted to do that uh, in the State of the Nation last night. Whether he succeeded or not, I think there's uh, a lot of pushback from uh, both political commentators and analysts suggesting that there was very little new uh, around fleshing out what uh, radical economic, socio-economic transformation meant. 
But I think some of the key themes is that government's going to be more assertive in using what uh, uh, President Zuma described as the strategic levers of legislation, of regulation, of you know, procurement, uh, spending 500 billion rand a year, as he mentioned, and leveraging that to transform the economy, to, to try and deracialize the economy. Um, it was set against the backdrop of, um, of an Oliver uh, Tambo speech that was made in the 1980s. We were saying you know, that we can't talk about political uh, liberation in abstract to uh, uh, economic liberation, that there needs to be a, uh, a change in the ownership structure of the economy. And the president went into quite a lot of depth lamenting what he sees as the lack of transformation in the, the economy in South Africa. But in terms of the actual hard projects and hard programs, obviously there's already been deals struck in the construction sector. So we're seeing a changing face of the construction sector. He mentioned the 30% set aside for smaller contractors in government projects. You know, we already see Murray and Roberts selling their South African operations. We see Avenge doing a major restructuring of Greenica LTA. We've seen announcements by other contractors that they're going to be uh, working with um, uh, smaller companies on, on projects to try and mentor and develop these uh, emerging contractors. So that's actually not new. What I suppose was a couple of new, new elements was that there's going to be some more legislative tightening of the Competition Act and there's going to be uh, a bill going around the state mining company which I think again it was, uh, it was mooted in the past but now uh, he's put, uh, the President has put some time definition in the sense that we are going to put these uh, during the course of the current parliamentary session, tightening of the competition rules and the state mining company. So there is a little bit of flesh to the vision, uh, or flesh on the bones of that vision of radical economic transformation. The issue is a lot of these uh, initiatives are actually have been mooted before or have been implemented in some way before, and the implementation has been patchy. Whether this uh, will be enough to stimulate a proper implementation around these programs, we'll have to wait and see. But given what we saw in Parliament, the chaos and uh, the, the level of antagonism towards the President the, and the divisions obvious that are obvious in the African National Congress and within government themselves, within Cabinet, it's going to be hard to see whether that line of march is really going to be held right throughout the Zuma presidency. What does this mean for business in 2017? I think business comes out of the state of the nation concerned and perplexed and uncertain as ever. There have been these efforts in 2016 to try and come together, really led by Finance Minister Pravin Gordon, uh, sort of brought people together really around the campaign to avoid junk status. So, and that has been fairly successful. We have avoided it, but we're not out of the woods there by a long shot. There's going to be other rating uh, uh, assessments in 2017. And there have also been some nice uh, initiatives on the fringes around you know, small business, a 1.5 billion fund that uh, business is prepared to come up with, as well as this initiative to try to give young people work experience, a million young people work experience, which I think are, are positive developments. But I think business will come out looking at the state of Poland, looking at this um, chaos that reigning, uh, it's, it's, it causes a lot of uncertainty. It's not the sort of environment that you're going to easily invest into or buy into. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.